So hi everyone, and welcome to this video on a simple proof, just to prove that uh, the conditional expectation uh, minimizes this so-called mean squared error. So the theorem goes as follows. So we have that for any function g, it holds that the expected value of y given x, uh, sorry, expected value of y minus expected value of y given x squared is less than or equal to the expected value of y minus g of x squared. And the intuition of it is simple. Um, it means that the conditional expectation minimizes the so-called mean squared error, which suggests that the best predictor of some value y is the conditional expectation, at least in the mean squared error sense. So we can prove this uh, sort of statement with uh, this sort of theorem with a proof. Uh, with a very simple proof that involves uh, mainly the law of iterated expectations. So what we have here, so we're going to use um, expected value of uh, y minus g of x, right, squared. That's this term. Uh, that's the second term there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of rewrite this, but we're going to add and subtract the same term, which means that we effectively didn't change the term. So that's expected value of y minus the expected value y given x plus the expected value y given x minus g of x, uh, everything, this entire thing, squared, right? So we just uh, add and subtract this term, okay? Then from here, notice that I'm sort of going to group these. So I'm going to group this as one group and then this is like another group and if you recall from well high school that's uh we the square of a binomial we have a square here that's just a squared plus two a b plus b squared so think of this first thing here as a the second thing here is b so what we have here is going to be um equal to the expected value y minus expected value y of x squared uh, plus uh, expected value, expected value y given x minus g of x squared. So that's the b squared plus part, then the plus 2 times a, that's expected value, y minus expected value y given x times expected value of the expected value of y given x minus g of x, okay? So that's what we have. So uh, we're gonna zero in on this term right here. So let's zero in here, here. So say, let's call this term star. So let's sort of uh, investigate this term star. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manipulate star by the law of iterated expectations, iterated expectations, I get the following. So I get um, expected value of the expected value. I'm going to condition on x. That's y minus expected value y given x. Uh, then I get a times the expected value of uh, y given x minus g of x, okay? Conditional on x, okay? So I have that term there, okay? So, whoops, let me just simplify it there, okay? So we have this working term here, and what you can see is, okay, this term here is a function of x, this term here is also a function of x, and this term here is a function of x. So effectively, if we condition them on x, nothing's gonna happen. But uh, what about this y term that we have here? Well, something's gonna happen with that because we need to condition that on uh, x. So we can rewrite this as the expected value of expected value y given x minus expected value y given x, right? Nothing's gonna happen to the, that's what's changed times expected value y given x minus g of x, right? 
But uh, something happened, which is here, right? Notice that because we conditioned on X, this will become equal to zero. And again, this is by the law of, of iterated expectations. And because this is equal to zero, this entire thing now is equal to zero, right? So because the entire thing is equal to zero, effectively, this thing here is gone, okay? And what we have remaining is that um, the term we had is expected value of um, y minus g of x uh, squared is gonna be equal to these two terms here, which is uh, expected value of y given, uh, expected value of y minus the conditional expectation squared plus the expected value of the expected value of y given x minus the function squared. Okay, so we're gonna have that term. And notice something that I want to, you to sort of understand, which is this term here, the second term, okay, it's squared. So this term can never be negative. It can only be greater than or equal to zero, right? So this is some positive term, right? By construction, because it's something squared. And because it's like that, then since this is something squared, these two would have been equal had it not been for this one. Then you can now conclude uh, what we've been leading up to, which is that the expected value of y minus g of x squared is going to be greater than or equal to, but because when you transpose this to the other side, it becomes a lower value. They would have otherwise been equal to the expected value of um, y minus expected value y given x squared, right? Oops, the squared, yeah, the squared term should be uh, here. Okay, so this ends the proof, and that's a proof on why the conditional expectation minimizes the mean square error. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.